you showed it, but to show it algebraically or analytically, you can split up functions, right? That's what all these uh, very formal looking rules were saying. If you know, if you want the limit of some combination of functions, either that, add, added two functions, subtracted, multiplied, the quotient of two functions, you can break this apart here. So the same way you, we broke apart this function into two pieces, right? Just divided each one separately. You can break this function apart and it's going to be the limit of each of those separately. All right, so 3x squared over x squared and plus the limit of x plus 1 over x squared, right? The reason that helps is because on this side, 3x squared over x squared, you can simplify. What does that become? Just 3, right? The limit of something that's 3 is pretty uh, easy to figure out because the graph looks like this, right? There's 3. Anywhere you go, it's 3. The limit anywhere is 3. The limit of the other one, you can't really substitute in infinity, 1 over x squared. But you can think about it and say, instead of thinking 1 over infinity squared, don't look for the infinity button on your calculator. You just think 1 over really big number squared. Okay, really big number squared. What's 1 divided by really big number squared? Yeah, it's like 1 over really big number. You don't even need the squared. 1 divided by really big number is basically 0. So that's what you're doing to evaluate limits like that. It's harder when it's a function over another function because like, you can't think about this one directly as in, you can't think, well, 3 times infinity squared plus 1 over infinity squared. You can't think about it like that, but you... You simplify it first, and then you can easily see that's going to be 0, that's going to be 3, so that's going to be 3 altogether, all right? So to, to work out some limits algebraically or analytically, you can use algebra to change the functions around so that it's easier to do. This one down below it here is a composition of functions. It's not the sum of two functions. Sometimes you can use that. It's not one of the rules that we have here that doesn't say anything about the composition of two functions. But for this one, you can think about it that way. It's a, it's a composition of cosine that function of 1 over x, right? It's two functions. It's the reciprocal of the, co, the cosine of the reciprocal of x. If you think about what's the inside function here, the inside function is 1 over x. If we want to know the limit as you approach infinity, again, you can't substitute in infinity, but you can think about it. 1 over infinity was, what are we realizing that's going to be? Zero, right? So then basically we're thinking here this is the limit as x approaches infinity of, of uh, cosine of zero, more or less, right? You can, you can think about the limit of that, right? You can, when you have a composition like this, you can think it's the limit of this function. Like you, you can look at the limit of the inside here. The limit of the inside is that. This is basically going to be what then? Cosine of zero. That one you can actually work out, right? Cosine of zero is one. The limit of this is one. If you graph this function and go infinitely to the right, it's going to level off at one. Okay? If you want to convince yourself using graphing technology, put it in there and see, right? If you're ever not sure what you've done algebraically is right, put it in your calculator and check, right? You can always check things graphically. Let's go zoom trig for this since it involves trig. Uh, I guess I forgot to go 1 over x, didn't I? That was really good. Let's try again. 1 over x. Okay, then look at it. It's uh, crazy stuff in the middle. And then if you zoom in on the middle, you'll see that it oscillates more and more as you get close to the middle. It's actually better if I use the, you know what I'm going to do? We're going to stop. That's cosine of 1 over x. As you go out to infinity, this thing levels off, right? Like if you bring this in here, the limit is infinity. It's leveling off at 1, right? If you are, if you go back to the middle here, it's hard to say what the limit is in the center because as you get closer and closer to the middle, well, like while we have this function here, let's just see what's happening. Oops, that's not happening. Um, 
it's pretty slow because it has a hard time doing all these calculations. Okay, if you keep if you keep enlarging this thing here, um, what do you think happens? And why? Why does this keep happening? Why does it keep enlarging like that? Like, what's going on there? Um, yeah, well, it's undefined in the middle, but why does it go? Why does it oscillate more and more? You get closer to the center. When you put one over a smaller and smaller number, the number is getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster. So, where's the mouse? Doesn't work with the pen. And this computer is conspiring against me. Anyways, you get the idea. <coughs> As you get closer to the middle there, if you do point, point 0.1, zero 0.05, zero 0.01, it's going to uh, oscillate more and more and more. In the center, it's undefined, even though you can't see that there's no value there. It's kind of a crazy function. but Anyways, the point is that you can, uh, you can work on some of these things. Algebraically, you can check them graphically, put them on the calculator. Uh, we talked last time about the two different things we're looking at here, horizontal and vertical asymptotes. We looked at infinite limits as you approach a finite number. Infinite limits as you approach a finite number. That's your vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes happen when you have an infinite limit as you approach a finite number. Right? If you if you pick some finite number here like a, if as you approach that from the left or the right, it's infinity or or negative infinity. That's what a that's what a vertical asymptote is. Now compare that to the thing at the beginning, which was kind of the converse of that. This was finite limits as you approach an infinite value here. The function one over x has has both in it. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. The reason for that is because the limit as you approach an infinite value, infinity of 1 over x, is a finite number, 0. That's how you look at horizontal asymptotes. If you're looking for vertical asymptotes, you're looking for switching this and this, right? You're looking if uh, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Since what's true? Since the limit as you approach that finite number, I'm going to say from the right, but it doesn't matter one way or the other, right? As you approach from the right, as you approach 0 from the right, that that's infinity. So it's infinity in one place or the other. Either infinity is there and not there, or it's there and not there, right? That's the two types of limits we're looking at here. One tells you where vertical asymptotes are. One tells you where horizontal asymptotes are. All right? Now, some the next thing in here is uh, likely something you learned in grade 10 or 11, thinking about where vertical asymptotes are going to happen. Horizontal asymptotes are harder. You didn't look for horizontal asymptotes in grade 11 because you needed to sort of have the concept of limits when you looked at those weird functions that were rational functions. Horizontal asymptotes, you need to think about limits. But vertical asymptotes are easy because when you're looking at rational functions, algebraic fractions, you can figure out where the vertical asymptotes are by just looking at what the fraction is and what's not allowed, right? Either either graph these with a calculator or graph them using just your knowledge of those graphs and think about where the think about where the vertical asymptotes are and we're gonna look for our shortcut or our uh, how you looked for things before, okay? So I'm gonna stop this. And you're gonna try and graph those four things and then write down your shortcut here. Okay, and then we're gonna look at that thing called end behavior models.